Um, if you saw any little ad advertisements on Facebook, um, you know that this is the Sunday before Christmas, and a lot of times this has a, a you know, a, an air of Christmas about it. Um, but I have to say something to you. It, it's going to have an air of Christmas about it, but I'm really sensing from the Lord I need to say a few more things about the serious business of joy mixed with God with us. Because let's face it, in His presence is what? Fullness of joy. Do y'all remember what the angel said to Mary? Mary, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now that should get you happy right there. Jesus is the clearest representative of God we've ever seen in this earth realm. And if you can see it in Jesus, you can see it in God. If you don't see it in Jesus, it ain't in God. You know, one interesting thing about Jesus, he never made one person sick to teach him something. No. Right. What does that show you? Well, if Jesus is God with us, then God is not making people sick That's right. to teach them something. That's, right. That's religion. That's lies. That's, right. That's man trying to figure out God with their own experience. Right. Right. Through their own experience. You know, Jesus never, ever, ever caused one destructive storm. Well, that tornado, you know, has been an act of God. Well, that hurricane was an act of God. No, Jesus never did, but he did calm storms. So if you want to know what God's attitude is toward destructive storms, he calms them, not causes them. Can I get a witness? You look at Jesus, I mean, he didn't come to give us religion. He came to give us life. He didn't come to condemn the world and make us feel bad for our sins. He saved us from our sins. And that should make you happy. Amen. And, but, but we've been talking about, so I'm going to connect this with the serious business of joy because when you realize what the Christmas story is really all about, <sighs> you can't be sad. Unless you just flat out don't believe what you're hearing. But if you believe what the scripture says about why Jesus came to earth, I don't care if you're in the worst pain of your life, have the most financial problems of your life, just went through the most marriage problems of your life, you will be happy because Jesus overrides all that. And he fixes all that too, if you let him. So the serious business of joy. So before we get to the Christmas scripture, look at Proverbs 17 and verse 22 again. This is a scripture we've been going to quite frequently in our church. And as you read this scripture, you need to remember this is God talking to you. He's, he's speaking, giving wisdom to a man. This man, Solomon, is having it written down, but it's God's wisdom. Anybody interested in hearing from God? Yes. Pastor, I just feel, it'll feel like I could hear from God. <laughs> Open your Bible. Pastor, I just have such a hard time hearing from God. I just don't hear his voice. Open your Bible and read it. It's God's love letter to you. If you want to hear from God, read the Bible. So Proverbs 17, 22, God through Solomon said, a merry heart comes on the scene after you feel better. <laughs> that is incorrect, not right. But most people think that's, you know, what being merry and joyful is all about. Great things happen. Woo, I rejoice because great things are happening. This scripture says the opposite. This scripture says when you're not feeling well, you can do with something about it. Everybody say, I can do it. Something about my circumstances. A merry heart. Who's in charge of the condition of your heart? Come on, somebody tell me, who's in charge of the condition of your heart? You can be happy anytime you want to be, or you can be sad anytime you want to be. And it's not because of circumstances, it's because of choices that people are happy or people are sad. You need to get a revelation that you and I, we are not trees. You know what I mean? We are, we are the offspring of God. You and I are told by God, be glad and rejoice. And everybody starts trying to feel something. What you be is way more powerful than what you feel. Be whatever you want to be. And don't let the devil or circumstances try to tell you, child of God, you have to be what they say you should be. 
You'll get this revelation. If you read through the scriptures, the book of Acts, all kinds of places, you'll get this revelation that as soon as you cheer up because of what Jesus has done for you is when the storms will start to clear up in your life. But see, natural man, people who don't know God, wait for things to clear up before they cheer up. God says you're more powerful than that. You cheer up and things will clear up. Anybody want anything to clear up in their life? then maybe you need to quit waiting for it to clear up and cheer up because of what Jesus has done to provide you victory in that area, and then things will have to clear up by your choice. I'm sure the devil is just, just going, ha, 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 to so many people being pushed around by his lies and his whims and his circumstances and his suggestions. All the while, they could rise up and say, oh, I'm turning this thing around. Put it back up, Xander. It says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Well, pastor, that's talking about spiritually. But a broken spirit dries the bones. Come on, he's talking even about physical health here. He's relating it to bones and flesh and organs in your body. If you want to feel better, according to God, what's one of the things you should do? Get happy. Now, let me ask you this. If you were here two weeks ago, happy about what? What? You believe. Get this revelation, church. We are joyful because of what we believe more than anything else. And that means you can be joyful in the midst of the greatest tribulation of your life because you believe something's greater than that tribulation. The Lord who loves you more than you know, right? He's provided you victory in every area of your life. We need to learn to get happy when we don't feel like being happy and live this life, not just jump in the joy. We're not talking about just being happy for happiness sake. You've got to go deeper than that. We're happy because God didn't lie to us. He told us something that made us, maybe right now doesn't look like it's real, but he didn't lie. And this stuff here that looks like it's bigger than that, it's going to change because God's not going to leave you stranded while you're rejoicing in his promises all your life. I mean, th these things, do you ever wonder sometimes why things don't change immediately? You know, th bad things, you ever wonder why? I have. Well, Lord, why isn't this going away? I prayed, confessed scriptures, done everything I know to do, and it's been four weeks and it's gotten worse. What's up, God? The Lord said, oh, you're just growing in strength and power. Amen. And the Lord told me one time, very recently again, he reminded me. He said, you know, as you're standing in faith week after week for something to change in your life, and it looks like it's not changing, a lot of times it's getting worse, Lord says, do you realize what's going on here? You think the greatest thing is that this blessing you're wanting shows up. The greatest thing that's happening is you're developing spiritually. Your patience is going further. Your perseverance is getting stronger. Your character is getting more sparkly like Jesus. Your hope is increasing. You think the greatest thing is the money or the healing or this. He said something greater is happening. And if you let that thing work, you'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So now you've got the blessing you believe for, but now that's not even the greatest thing anymore. You grew in God. You developed in Christ. You got to know Him better because you hit your knees like you never hit your knees before. And now you're looking back going, the thing I thought I really, 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 really wanted is great, but I got something better in the process. This tribulation worked patience. One translation is perseverance, endurance. And that endurance worked experience, which is priceless. And that experience worked hope. And that hope will never disappoint you. Because God loves you, and he didn't lie to you. It's up to you, it's up to me what kind of heart we have. What if you decide to have a merry heart when you're not feeling well? God said it's medicine to your flesh, mm -hmm. bones, flesh. It's, it's not natural, it's supernatural. 
And if you're going to keep doing ordinary things, you're going to keep seeing ordinary results. It's until you do something out of the ordinary that you're going to see something out of the ordinary in your life. Anybody ready for some out of the ordinary blessings to show up in your life? Well, then you might have to do something a little out of the ordinary, like be merry in the midst of a test because God told you you're coming out and you're going to win. We have thousands of promises and thousands of reasons to be merry and happy and joyful no matter what is presently going on around us. Everything physical, natural, everything that can bring problems and stress your way, know this one truth, it's temporary. But there are some eternal things that will never change. That's what we need to be focused on and that's what we need to be happy about like the Word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. So I'd say stand on the Word and watch all your problems crumble instead of stand on your problems and not see the Word work for you. Everybody say this. According to Proverbs 17, verse 22, joy, joy makes, makes good things happen. Good things happen. If that joy is connected with what you believe, by his stripes I was healed. My God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Huh? Sin will not have dominion over me. I'm not under the law, but under grace. I have power over all demon forces, and they have to leave when I say in Jesus' name, go. Come on. If you're happy because of those things, what's going on? Joy is making good things happen in your life. As they were singing the first song, I thought, joy to the world. Joy to the world. Joy has come to the world. But that doesn't mean it's working in your life. It's come to you. Joy to the world doesn't mean you automatically get everything that, that joy is about. But it's so you believe, latch on, accept the scriptures, ex get excited about what the Lord's, and it'll start working in your life. It's not it starts working, then you get happy. The scripture says you get happy and it starts working. Right. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Say this, being glad, being glad. By, choice, by choice changes things. Changes things. Say this, when I cheer up, Things will, shape up. things will shape up. It's called celebration that leads to victory. You see how backwards that is to the world? It's like nobody in the world has a problem rejoicing when things get better. This scripture says if you can get to the place of rejoicing, even though things aren't good in your life right now, that spiritual force of faith and joy will actually change natural circumstances and things will have to get in line with you instead of you getting in line with them. How many would rather things get in line with you than you always having to get in line with these things? Did we talk about two, two or three weeks ago? Oh, by the way, wasn't Dominic's message great? Hello, I'm right here. So good. And then the kids program. It's been three weeks ago since I preached this, so I had to go over some of this. But do you realize that your, your decision to be a joyful person has more to do with you than any circumstance around you? Hmm? Are things going to try to go haywire at times? Yeah. You know what your attitude should be? So what? God's Word didn't change. So what? He's still deliverer and greater than all. So what? A merry heart still does good like a medicine. Now, when I was looking at the scripture, I was thinking, now wait a second. A merry heart does good like a medicine. All right, let me ask. Let me ask. Are people happy because they're healthy? Or are they healthy because they're happy? Take in their finances. Are people really happy because they're rich, or are they rich because they're happy? A merry heart does, you don't like your circumstances? Doeth something about them. 
What should you doeth about your circumstances? One thing is, get happy about God's promises and answers that promise you victory over that thing. Can I go even beyond that, though? Get happy that you're saved. Get happy that you're not going to a real hell that you totally deserve. Get happy that your name's in the book that says you get to go into heaven. Get happy. Jesus did these things for us. I think I mentioned, too, a few weeks ago that, you know, we preach divine healing for everybody because the Bible preaches divine healing for everybody. By his stripes, everybody has a right to be healed. If people aren't receiving it, that's not because God didn't give it. Right. But you know what? We don't preach divine healing. We do preach it, but we don't preach it because we're afraid to die. And we don't preach divine protection. We do preach divine protection, but we don't preach it because we're afraid to die. Are you kidding me? We're going with the Father when we leave this place. That's awesome. Jesus said, don't get all sad that I said I'm going to go away. He said, you should rejoice because I go to my Father. Disciples were like, oh, you can't go, Jesus. Oh, you can't. Said, Guys, I'm going to the Father. Oh, we lost them. If they're believers, you didn't lose them. They relocated. There's arrivals and departures every day on this planet. If you could back out in outer space and look and see in the realm of the Spirit, you'd see hundreds of thousands of arrivals every day babies being born, and you'd see 100,000 plus departures every day. It's like a big airport. The thing is, you better be on the right plane. Because some go up and some go down. And don't think it's God sending people to hell. It's the devil taking people to hell who don't accept Jesus. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, not for mankind. It shows you right there, God never wanted anybody to go. But if man wants to stay on the road Adam put them on, that's their choice. They'll end up in a place God does not want them to end up. And he will let them go if they don't choose the only way out. Right. Do I need to calm down a little? <laughs> it's Christmas. Jesus is born. And I, I know, I know, I know he wasn't born on December 25th, but he was born. <laughs> he was born. Maybe we didn't get the date right, but let's celebrate. He's, I like to celebrate he's born every single day of my life. He was born. He lived a sinless life. He was powerful. He helped people. He died on a cross. He went to hell for me. He rose from the dead. He ever lives to make intercession. Glory to God. But if he wasn't born, he couldn't die. And if he wasn't born supernaturally of a virgin, his death wouldn't have meant anything in the area of us being redeemed because it took a spotless, sinless lamb to fix this problem that Adam and Eve messed up. So I don't believe in the virgin birth. You're not saved. Just like I don't believe Jesus was really raised from the dead. You're lost because the Bible says if you really want to be saved, you got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. It, your whole eternal existence depends upon these things. I say, I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. Well, Pastor, I just think being real good is what's going to get us into heaven. Then what in the world did Jesus die for? Just being real good. Why didn't he just teach us a little bit more? Matthew chapter 2, please. Say this, if I don't like what's happening in my life, I can doeth something about it. A merry heart doeth. Good like a medicine. Now, I have to say this. Um, I've been through struggles. I've been through things. We've been through things. Church-wise, marriage-wise, other areas. And it is the most ridiculous thing to be joyful in the midst of a hellish trial. Ridiculous to your brain. Pleasing to God. There's times I've laughed with tears coming down my face. Pain. Pressure. Attack. Almost looks like a contradiction. <laughs> what am I doing? 
I'm acting like God didn't lie. My body may be trembling, but my spirit is laughing. And at times it feels like it's not doing any good. At times it feels like it's not working. At times it feels like this is a little strange. But let me tell you what's strange. What's strange is keep doing the same old things you've been doing and seeing very little precious results because we're not moving into these things beyond our feelings. Amen. Matthew 2, look at verse 10. The wise men from the east. Everybody say wise men. Wise. Say wise men. These were not only wise men, they're called magi. They were kings. They were very, very powerful people, high-level people. It says wise men came from the east, and it says when they saw the star, they bowed their heads and said, praise the Lord. I'm mature. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm mature. We have another word. We call it starch. Sometimes people are starchy when they think they're mature. Now you think kings, you know, with gold and frankincense and myrrh. We're not talking little bottles you get at Knott's Berry Farm. We're talking tre treasure chests of gold. Kings don't bring little bottles of gold. That would be a disgrace. Kings brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus. And you know, really, if you want to get it straight here, it didn't say there were three kings. It said there were three gifts. Could have been ten kings. Could have been two. Could have been five. It said there were three gifts. Now, I'm not saying, they, maybe, maybe they're right. I don't know. When we get to heaven, I think we'll find out. But uh, there was three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it said they were kings. Mm -hmm. They were probably decked out. You know, had the, the Mercedes camels and the Rolls Royce camels. <laughs> right? So, so here they come. Here they come to Jesus. And it said, when they saw the star... What happened? They rejoiced, but it didn't say they rejoiced only, with exceeding great joy. Well, okay, so they see the star that points to Jesus, and they're rejoicing with exceeding great joy. I wonder what people who have that Jesus in them rejoice like. If it's already exceeding great and it's just a star pointing to him, how should we be rejoicing and we got him in us? Amen. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Right. And, and again, don't just look to your feelings to see if it's time to rejoice. Look to what God's done for you. Look to who's on the inside of you. You know, some people need to just sit there for two hours and say over and over again, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world until you're dancing and shouting. What if I'm not dancing and shouting? You probably need to say it a few hundred more times. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than this cancer coming against me. Greater is he that's in me than these financial difficulties. Greater is he that's in me than this thing trying to break up my marriage. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Or how about I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can overcome this thing. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Did you know you can talk yourself into a, a celebration? You can... You, your words are so powerful. When they come out of your mouth and go back into your ears, they do something to your heart, your spirit. <laughs> now, the serious business of joy goes like this. If you're serious, if you're seriously wanting to do something, about that disease in your body, you're going to have to get happy about God's promises that you were healed. Amen. Serious business of joy. The power of joy. Look at um, Numbers 13. No, I'm sorry, Romans 5. We'll probably have to close here. Look at Romans chapter 5. Anybody have to do any Christmas shopping besides me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you'll probably see me out there on Christmas Eve <laughs> before service, not during service. <laughs> That'd be terrible if you saw me out there at 3, because then you'd realize and I'd realize, ah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, all right, 
before I read this, I, I must say this to you. Um, Paul the Apostle was going through one of the toughest times of his life. You know, how many know tough stuff's going to come against you even though you're in God's will? You do know that, right? Tough stuff is going to come against you. And it doesn't mean you did something wrong. Sometimes we create our own problems, but a lot of times it's just the enemy trying to hurt us because he's still here. But we can resist him. We can stop him. We can say no. We can quote scriptures. We can overcome. Just because something, some affliction, just because some tribulation came your way doesn't mean you did something wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong and all kinds of attacks came to him. Paul, didn't, Paul got in the will of God and all kinds of problems came to him, but they overcame them all. God never said there'd be no, no battles, but he did promise you would always win. And pretty soon you start going, you know what? All trouble is, is an opportunity to grow in God and to see his power rest on me. So here's Paul right in the, mid, great, right in the middle of one of the greatest battles of his life. He said, I prayed and I sought the Lord thrice, three times, that this thing might depart from me. He's not getting anywhere. Like a lot of people say, they, they pray and they pray and they pray and they pray. And they see, oh God, take this away. Oh God, make this change. Oh God, make this happen. Two prayers God cannot answer. Number one, he cannot answer the prayer where you're asking him to do something for you he told you to do. Can't answer that prayer. Number two prayer God can't answer is when you keep asking him for something, he, in his word, he said he already gave you to appropriate. And so Paul's praying three times, God, I wish this thing would depart from me. God, I wish this problem would leave me. And Jesus said, Paul, you need to quit praying and start saying something. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul goes, got it, got it. Don't need to keep praying. I need to start saying his grace is sufficient for me. And then Paul said this. He said, he said Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. And in that scripture, he's talking about weaknesses and persecutions coming against him. He says, no, I'm going to glory in my trouble. So that, say so that. so that, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Anybody want so that? Then your attitude during times of tribulation is of utmost importance. I will glory in mine infirmities so that. You're not glorying and you're not rejoicing for the stupid stuff the devil or whatever's thrown your way. You're glorying because God's grace is sufficient for you and this thing is temporary. I'm coming out. I will win. I'll develop. I'm getting stronger. I'll get the blessing because God didn't lie. Yeah. Some people are a little off. They think, well, we're supposed to thank God for sickness and disease. No! You thank God in the midst of sickness and disease that by his stripes ye were healed and you're coming out of this thing and you're going to slap it in the devil's face and you're going to turn the test into a testimony. Amen. And he's going to wish he never would have attacked you. Amen. So in closing, Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified or made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep going. By Jesus, we also have something else. Everybody say, also. also. How many glad you're saved? Yes. How many glad you're going to heaven? Yes. There's also more. Amen. Yeah. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And church, please, don't, don't think God's not answering people's prayers. Some of them just haven't learned to access what belongs to them. Okay, we access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and we, re we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Next verse. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations. <laughs> I purposely just wanted to hear how quiet it was. I, I, I knew I wasn't going to hear any, Amen, Pastor Preach it. Can we go on to something else besides tribulation now? Tribulation is something we can all relate to. Anybody ever done any tribulating? <laughs> Not fun. 
But what's the outcome of it if you don't give up? Look at Job. What was his outcome? And he even made some mistakes in the process. Church, do you realize when you're standing in faith and the trial of your faith is coming against you and you feel like it can't get any worse and it just gets three times worse, you pray and believe and quote in scriptures and it doesn't seem to get any better, two more months go by. See, this is what the trial of your faith is. Do you realize that if you don't quit and give up, you are going to experience the glory of God. And we've got to get an attitude like Paul. He says, he says, but we glory in tribulation. That word glory means we rejoice. Who rejoices in tribulation? Who really does that? Not for the tribulation, in the tribulation. Basically, you're saying, I don't care what I'm in right now. It ain't getting in me. You can be in jail like Paul and Silas and the jail not be in you. And that's how you get out. It's when things start getting in you that they start running their course. I know I'm getting a little passionate about this, but God wants his people free. He wants you delivered. He wants you healed. He wants you strong. He wants you wealthy. He wants you a major blessing. And sometimes you just got to get a hold of yourself and be glad when you don't feel glad. Because you're not pushed around by circumstances and demons anymore. You take charge of your life and your circle and your, your uh, what do you call it? Uh, cir- circuit orbit of life. That's up to you what happens in that orbit. Is there a circumference? Anyway. It's up to you, church. Amen. I was reading Ecclesiastes where it said, there's a time to mourn. And there's a time to laugh. I was thinking, there is a time to laugh. And most people are laughing when they should be mourning, and they're mourning when they should be laughing. I made a list of seven things that the Bible says times we should laugh. Almost every one of them is when you're not going to feel like it. When you're not feeling well, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Count it all joy when you fall into the greatest temptation of your life. Get up, brush yourself off, resist condemnation, and rejoice that God's your Savior. God says one time you should be full of joy is when you're giving during offerings. God loves a cheerful giver. You probably aren't going to feel like being cheerful when you, when you just gave a bunch. The Bible says when they hate you, when they call you names and cuss you out because you're a believer. Jesus said in that day you need to see how high you can jump for joy because so persecuted they the prophets which went before you. You're not going to feel like jumping for joy when somebody just lied about you and cussed at you and said every, called you everything but a child of God. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to choose to do it anyway. Jesus said Luke chapter 6, leap for joy and rejoice for so persecuted great men and women of God before you. Job said laugh at destruction and at famine. Then he sums it all up and says, Rejoice in the Lord always! And again, I say rejoice. He said, We glory in tribulation. We're closing with this. Knowing that tribulation is working something in you. And this is even better than the thing you're believing for. Doesn't get any better than knowing God more. Doesn't get any better than Jesus-like character. Oh, the healing's wonderful. Oh, the bill paid off, the house paid off. That's great. But you know what's even greater? The patience that's working in you. James says if you let that patience work in you properly, you'll come to a point where you're perfect and entire wanting nothing. Why? Because you'll have everything. Inside, next verse. Patience works what? I know we like that saying, you know, better to learn from the experience of others than having to go through it yourself, but there's some things you're going to have to go through. Because you won't get the character unless you go through it. You'll just get the teachings. But you need more than just, you need the character yourself. One translation says this, perseverance works character. Don't worry, everything going to be all right. You're going to make it. You're going to come out without the smell of smoke on you. You're going to have a thousand scars all over your body. Are you listening? 
Next verse says, well, actually says, experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God. Let's stand up, church. Let's stand up. I know we don't like to talk about tribulation sometimes, but you know what? Our attitude can be, Jesus, you're with me in the fire. <laughs> I, um, we were driving back from some meetings in Vegas, some, some camp meeting meetings, and I had to preach like the next day. And so I'm seeking the Lord. I think it was around Easter or some, some, for some reason. It was something before Easter. Anyway, we were praying and seeking the Lord. And I was saying, Lord, what do you want me to teach on? He said, teach on this. Jesus is in trouble. I thought, wow, that's cool. What do you mean? And he said, when you're in trouble, he's in trouble with you to get you out. The fourth man in the fire. Right? Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. is in trouble. trouble. I remember saying that when, when we preached it and little Reese on the front row goes, oh, what? <laughs> Jesus is in trouble? What did he do? What did he do wrong? Nothing. He's in your wrong to help get you out. Right. He's in the fire with you. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. And if he's with you, you're going to be all right. Still might have to walk through that valley. Through. Everybody say through. through. But if he's with you, enjoy his company in the midst of the darkness. Rejoice that his promises are true. I don't care. I, don't, I shouldn't say I don't care. It doesn't matter what's surrounding you right now or what you're feeling on the inside or what the doctor's report is or what the business is looking like or what is not looking like or what's going on with your kids or what's going on with your family or your grandkids or your health. Listen, these things happen. But we will rejoice in God our Savior and we will joy in the God of our salvation because he is not a liar. He promised the thing that's happening would have to have an end he promised he'd be with us. He told us we'd develop and get stronger. And he also said the thing that we're believing for would not only happen, but would happen much more than a lot of times we were even believing for. Say this, I'm not going to quit. And I'm not going to give up. Ha, ha, ha. Now go ahead, just, just laugh a little because you're not going to hell. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Whoever thought that leaping for joy and rejoicing when somebody just cussed at you was obeying Jesus? Whoever thought that laughing when things aren't going real well in your life was actually obeying the Lord? The Lord told me the other day, he said, son, you need to, because I was talking about some of the financial things that were coming against us, I was saying, Lord, um, you know, I just keep telling the Lord, I said, son, you're just looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at where you're at, not where you could be. You know, we all gravitate to where we're looking. Yeah. You do know that. You know, airplane pilots, when they're landing, they're not supposed to look at where they're at. They look at where they're going to be because that's, that's where they gravitate toward. Look where you want to be, not necessarily where you is. Right. And I was kind of looking at some things. The Lord says, son, you need to go bird watching. You need to go do some bird watching. <laughs> Jesus told me to. So guess what I did? Sat there looking out my window getting paid to look at birds. <laughs> hey, the Lord told me to. I work for him. And I'm looking at the birds, and I saw this big fat bird. I think it was a crow right out here on the, on the driveway. I thought, man, that dude's been eating. And God said, yeah. And he didn't sow. He didn't reap. He didn't gather into barns. But I fed him. How much more am I going to feed you, son? Quit worrying. Quit looking at wrong things. No worry is the result of looking at something wrong. So just look at something right and you'll get out of the worry. Look at the promises, right? And they said, son, you need to go look at some flowers. I said, flowers? Yeah. You, 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 you. This is what I want you to look like. And even better than this. And Solomon didn't even look as good as this. Anyway, we'll talk about this some more later. Everybody doing all right? Yes. But remember, if you're not, you can do with something about it. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your mercy and your grace, for your love and your compassion. Thank you for this time of year where we celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Lord, God with us. Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth. 
Thank you for saving our lives spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and financially. We love you forever, and we praise you forever. Amen. I think it's you, Rich.